animatedanatomy.com. So in this lesson, I will talk about the liver. I'll talk about the anatomy of the liver. I'll discuss some other things as well about the function of the liver and a little bit of physiology as well. The liver is a vital organ of vertebrates and some other animals. In, hu in the human body, it is located in the upper right quadrant of the abdomen below the diaphragm. So here is the diaphragm. This is the diaphragm. And right below that, there is liver. You see it, right? So the liver is a gland and plays a major role in metabolism with numerous functions in the human body, including regulation of glycogen storage, decomposition of red blood cells, plasma protein synthesis, hormone production, and a detoxification. Liver is an accessory digestive gland, and it produces bile, an alkaline compound which aids in digestion via the emulsification of the lipids. The gallbladder stores the bile produced by the liver, and the gallbladder can be found right here under the liver. The gallbladder, before the meal, will be full, and it, it, it's the size of a pier. It, it will be full with bile. After the meal, it will be empty and flat. The liver's highly specialized tissue consists mostly of hepatocytes. Uh, they regulate a wide variety of high volume biochemical reactions including the synthesis and breakdown of small and complex molecules many of which are necessary for normal vital functions estimates regarding the organs total number of functions vary but textbooks generally cite it being around 500 if you have a lidney failure there is sadly no way to replace the liver, for example, in kidneys, uh, you can you can go to dialysis or or something like that. We, there is also a liver dialysis, but this technique can be used in a short term. In a long term, there is sadly no way to replace the living organ. The only way, if you have a liver failure, is to replace the liver is the liver transplantation, and that might be the only way to do it. Of course, all of this is important, and all of this is uh, reasonable and, and logical because liver is doing so many functions, and I just mentioned 500 that, that are mentioned in the textbooks. Now, the liver is a reddish-brown triangular organ with four lobes of an unequal size and shape. I will explain the lobes a little bit later. I will just tell you quickly that here you have the caudate lobe, then here is this is the left lobe, here is the quadrate lobe and the right lobe. I will explain these lobes a little bit later. So quadrate lobe, uh, caudate lobe, uh, left lobe and the right lobe. I'll explain the borders and everything later. Now just let's get back to the, to the general structure of liver. The liver is a reddish brown triangular organ with four lobes of unequal size and shape. A human liver normally weights between 1.4 to 1.6 kilograms. I don't know how much is that in pounds, but in Europe we use kilograms. It has both the largest internal organ and the largest gland in the human body as well. It is located in the right upper quadrant of the abdominal cavity, and it resets just below the diaphragm. I, I explained here is the diaphragm and here is the liver. On its left side, you have the stomach. You can see how it it's it's going in front of the stomach a little bit, and below that, below the liver, I've already explained that we have the gallbladder right here. So diaphragm, stomach, and the gallbladder. Now you understand where actually liver liver is. You, it's important to understand. The position of liver and 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 the way it's turned and aligned with, with with the organs around it. Now the liver gets its blood from two sources. It connects the two large blood vessels, the hepatic artery here and the uh, portal vein. Well, basically, the <clears throat> hepatic artery is coming from the aorta and it's bringing the oxygen-rich blood that is needed for survival of uh, 
hepatic blood cells, hepatocytes, and everything, and every other cell. The portal vein brings the nutrition with the blood from the digestive system. After this blood with oxygen and nutrition goes through the liver, they do what they have to do. The blood is going to the inferior vena cava here, and from there it goes to the heart. So that's basically where it gets its blood and the nutrition and also where the blood is drained. Now I will talk about the gross anatomy of liver. Now normally when we look at the when we look at the surface of liver, when we look at the upper surface of the liver, we see the two lobes. We see the left lobe and the right lobe. However, if we look at the visceral surface, I already said that there are four lobes of liver. And now I will show you that in a little bit better detail illustration. So here you are, you see the um, quadrate lobe here. Let me take the red color. Quadrate lobe. The red. So you see the quadrate lobe here. You see the left lobe, the caudate lobe, and of course here is the right lobe. Now to so if we look at the liver from the front or from the upper uh, perspective. So here we're looking from the upper perspective uh, on our liver. You can tell that here is the right lobe and here is the left lobe. Remember we're looking from the upper perspective. You see this ligament here. That's the falciform ligament. If we look at our 3D model and we're looking from the upper perspective as well, you can the ligament would be right here. It's basically dividing the liver in the left and the right lobe. You can draw an imaginary line along the vena cava and split the liver in two halves along with gallbladder. And that way uh, you create an imaginary line that's separating liver in two and this line is called the Cantley's line. Now we're looking at the liver again from the visceral point of view and other uh, anatomical landmarks exist such as the ligament here of the vena cava. Now remember this is the inferior vena cava that I showed you in 3D. Then you have the renal impression for example here. Now I'll just show you here is the right kidney and that's actually not illustrated very good but basically if you look at it yeah this is not a good illustration but basically the kidney should have an impression here on the liver. Uh, if we if we go back to our uh, previous il illustration, it should be right here, right? It, it it should be basically making an impression on the liver. Uh, of course, around the, the 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 kidney you have fat and everything, so maybe that's the reason why it wasn't illustrated very good in our 3D models. But here you have the colic impression, and remember that's because of the colon, because you know, you know the colon goes like this, right? So this part of the colon makes an impression on the liver. Right here, I've just uh, turned on the colon, and you can see the colon is illustrated perfectly here. So that's basically how the colon creates its uh, impression on the liver, and that's called the colic impression. Remember, above that should be the renal impression. Furthermore, you have here the round ligament of the liver. And remember when I said that the vena cava goes right here and if we make an imaginary line along that way uh, we can divide the gallbladder and the liver in two halves, the left and the right one, while the, the round ligament divides the left half furthermore. Uh, and now just to get back to these impressions uh, one thing I forgot to mention about the renal impression. The renal impression indeed is right here. But remember, it's not just about the kidney. There's also a suprarenal gland and the fat and everything else. So apparently the the the, the impression is made that way. But but the 3D model was not accurate. So it's important that you know I am sure that the 3D model was not accurate. In our illustration, the kidney should be a little bit higher than it was or the liver should be a little bit smaller in our 3D models. So just to mention there is fat, there is suprarenal glands and that that's why maybe the 3D model was a little bit uh, 
not exactly showing the accurate image. Now, if we look at the liver from here, you can see the that there is also a gastric impression. So we had the renal impression, the colic impression, and there is also the gastric impression right here. And also there is duodenal impression. So it's from duodenum. It's made on the duodenum. I'm not sure. It, it cannot be exactly seen on our illustration, but it's right here. If you see the impression on the liver model, if you're dissecting a liver and you see the impression over there, that's made from the duodenum. So you have here the the most laterally the colic impression, the duodenal impression, the gastric impression, and remember behind we had the kidney impression, and this is clear that the kidney is offset, the kidney is not, this is not the, the accurate presentation of the impression. There is also one more impression, and that is the esophageal impression, it's from the esophagus. So apparently here, right here, it should be right here, it's, it's close to the gastric impression there is also an impression of the esophagus on the liver surface. Now here we have the fissure for the ductus venosus and there is also a ligament of the ductus venosus. Uh, here you have the umbilical notch and of course the uh, umbilical fissure right here. Now this is all um, remnant of the ductus venosus and of the fetal circulation uh, there's not much uh, to talk about right there right now when we talk about the gross anatomy of the liver organ I think it's more important for you to understand the, the all the impressions you had the gastric impression you had the esophageal impression uh, the the renal impression the colic impression and also the duodenal impression. It's important to know these impressions and you understand the surface of the liver. Now remember the vein here, the vena cava and the line I told you, Cantley's line, how it divides. Remember the this ligament here is the ligament of the of the vena cava. Remember the lobes, the four lobes I explained. This is very important. And now I will talk about the inner structure a little bit more about what happens with the blood. When the blood goes inside of the liver from the digestive uh, uh, tract, when it goes from the aorta, it goes inside of the liver and what happens and how it gets to the vena cava. What happens inside? What's the structure inside? I'll go a little bit more into that, the microscopic anatomy and the physiology of anatomy. Check out my next video. Hello everyone, I developed Animated Anatomy that you can purchase on animatedanatomy.com. I put them links down there in the description, or you can click on a link here in a video. If you're not going to purchase my software, then at least make sure you leave a positive comment, subscribe, or like my video.